Hello students. Today we are discussing 2021 Anet English question paper that is of morning shift. First question is in apology for poetry, Sydney discusses the didactic function of poetry by comparing it to philosophy and religion. Sydney discussed uh, it by comparing the didactic poetry with uh, with the philosophy and religion. The defense of poetry was published in 1595. Actually, it was a, it's a work written against the allegations of Stephen Gosson against Elizabethan drama. Next question is, according to Longinus, which two of the following qualities apply to great poetry? The options were, it must be the work of genius and inspired person. It must cause a feeling of melancholy in the reader. It must employ devices of rhetoric and it must please selectively and on special occasions. Actually, the qualities mentioned by Longinus are from this question are it must be the work of genius and inspired person and also it must employ devices of rhetoric the next option sorry next question is in the functions of criticism T.S. Eliot attacked J. Middleton Murray and similar critics for being devotees of what what qualities actually the question means in the work the functions of criticism for which uh, which factor T.S. Eliot is criticizing critics like Middleton Murray. Actually, the uh, this is a very important work of T.S. Eliot. You have to remember the publishing date. That is, the function of criticism was published in 1959, sorry, 56. And he criticized and the question, uh, options were inner voice, the romantic impulse, the symbol hunt, and the muse mystery. Actually, T. S. Eliot is a uh, is a um, the new critic, and he is a follower of close reading. And in all his works of criticism, he mentioned that while criticizing or writing the work, uh, the author's personality should not be there in that work. So in that sense, he criticized Murray for following the inner voice. The correct answer is the inner voice. He said that critics and others should not follow their inner voice. In a work, there, wo there won't be any uh, reflection of, the, um, of that author's personal feelings and uh, thinkings, emotions. In, uh, in that way, he is uh, severely at, uh, against the um, poetries of romantic, romantic poets for whom uh, in romantic poetry, the personality of the rom uh, poet, that is the personality of, of uh, Wordsworth is, uh, we can, is shadowing in most of his poems. So next question is, who among the following compared the mind in creation to a fading call? Actually, uh, the correct answer is Shelley. He, in the work A Defense of Poetry, compared the mind in creation to a fading call. The options and the other options were Wordsworth, Coleridge and Keats. But all those options are wrong. Only Shelley is correct. Next question is, who among the following considered 
paraphrase as a hersey or a or a wrong thing hersey means or wrong thing actually clean clean brooks who is a new critic criticized that paraphrasing is a her is a hersey or a wrong one because when we paraphrasing a poetry we are trying to change its shape so uh, it will destroy the beauty of that poetry we can only shorten that poetry through paraphrasing but we cannot change its form so paraphrasing or shortening is a okay is a crime committing to that poetry this is what cleaner brooks said next question is what is empiricist linguistics linguistics is concerned with actually empiricist linguistics is concerned with the innate language knowledge this concept was developed by noam chomsky according to chomsky in all the in the brain of every children sorry every child there is an innate that is inborn capability to learn language this is why this is why uh, children in the uh, in when they are very small they can easily learn all, all the languages because there is a universal um, type of grammar in the, which is inborn in all the brain or in in all the in the brains of all children so other options were in investigation of the human mind directly observable sense data reason as a determinant of inquiry all these are wrong only empiricist linguistics is connected with the innate language knowledge knowledge that is the inborn cap capacity to learn language next question is potato is a 16th century borrowing into english from from the language spanish another question is who among the following represents the global spread of english diagrammatically as three concentric circles the options are david crystal jenny cheshire bridge b kachru and sally coco mufni and the correct answer is bridge b kachru this bridge b kachru belongs to our india and uh, he is a linguistic linguist who who developed the concept of english diagrammatically as three concentric circles and that circles are the inner outer and the expanding circles this concept was was developed in 1985 he described the spread of english as a three concentric circles next question is who among the following is the founder of survey of english usage of uh, uh, options were randolph kirk henry watson fowler michael swan and brian garner the founder of survey of english usage is randolph kirk this usage this survey was does uh, happened in the year 1959 Another question is who is the author of the short story Beethoven was 116th black Actually the correct answer of this is Nadine Godemar She wrote a short story collection it's a, actually Beethoven was 116th black is a short story collection published in the year 2007 
Other options like JM Coet C and Rebring Basil Head all are wrong options. Next question is arrange the following text in the chronological order of publication. The bridge, uh, the options were the bridge called my back, sexual politics, gender trouble, the feminine mystic. When we <coughs> look into the uh, chronology of all these works, first comes the feminine mystic, that is the option D. It was uh, written by Betty Friedan. It was published in 1963. Actually, the feminine mystic. Uh, is criticizing the concept that a woman feels completely satisfied with her, with only her um, house, household's jobs and children. Betty Friedan says that it's a false belief. She can be uh, a woman can be satisfied only oh, sorry only with both house uh, household things that is family and both job. And she is from USA. This feminine mistake, mist, sorry, mystic was published in 1963. And this book belongs to the second wave of feminism. Next published work was Sexual Politics, published in the year 1970 by Kate Millett. Next one is and the option sorry and the uh, and the next work is the this bridge called my back it was published in 1981 it's a feminist anthology by radical women of color and the last published was gender trouble by judith butler in the year 90 90. So the chronology will be first the feminine mystic, second is sexual politics, third is the bridge called my back and the last uh, last published was gender trouble. Next question is who is the author of the essay Lear, Tolstoy and the Fool? And the options were Aldox Huxley, George Orwell, Virginia Woolf and Somerset Moore. And the correct answer is uh, George Orwell published the work, uh, sorry, essay Lear, Tolstoy and the Fool. But uh, important work of Virginia Woolf is not uh, Lear Tolstoy but it's a room of one zone. It was published in 1929. Next question is Who is the editor of the Corn Hill magazine? The options were Charles Dickens, Lewis Carroll, William McPhee Thackeray, and Anthony Trollope. The first editor of the Cornhill magazine was William McPhee Thackeray. Uh, and here there, there was another there is another option that is Charles Dickens. He edited the magazines like All the Year Round and Edinburgh Review. Next question is, which of the following novels has its epigraph taken from the Katha Upanishad? This was taken from The Razor's Edge, written by Somerset Mom. It was published in 1944. And the main idea in that uh, epigraph is, Path to Salvation is Hard. 
this is uh, this is what the, the racer surge means there is another one option but that's not the answer that is uh, point counterpoint by aldox Huxley. but you have to remember the publishing date of this work also that is uh, 1928 actually this is the um, po point sorry co point counterpoint is the longest novel of aldox Huxley, and he tried to musicalize fiction through this novel Another important question is Eric Auerbach's Mimesis, which was published in 1946, ends with a chapter on. And this Mimesis ends with a chapter on Virginia Woods to the Lighthouse. And later in this anthology, they have included Edward Sutt's essays also. And the question is, which two works in the following list are written by Afra Ben? And the options were Rova, Orunoko, Soldier's Fortune, The Princess of Cleve. And the most important works of Afra Ben are Rova and Orunoko. Another question is, which two of the following conform to Northern Northrop Fry's typology of literature? We have to remember that four uh, seasons are mentioned here. And the correct options are myths of spring, spring related to comedy and so myths, no, not myths, but mythos. And uh, autumn is related to tragedy. And two other options are mentioned here. That is spring, sorry, uh, summer related to satire. No, it's not, uh, it's not right. And winter related to romance. That's also not right. Actually, summer is related to romance. Another question is, who among the following belong to the Chicago School of Critics? And the options are Aris Crane, E.M.W. Tilliard, Elder Olson and Alan Tate. Actually, this Chicago School of Critics is otherwise known as Neo-Aristotelian School. And the persons related to Chicago school are Aris Crane and the Elder Olson. Another uh, crit other critics are Norman Naclin and L Richard Maskeon. All these belong to Chicago school of critics. This school worked during the period between 1930 to 1950. Actually, this Chicago School of Critics or Neo-Aristotelians are against the ideologies of new critics. All, um, all the other uh, new critics argued only for the meter, rhythm and genre of any, any type of works, but they were against this. And in the uh, and this uh, Chicago School of Critics criticized the work Tom Jones in their in their criticism. Next question is. Arrange the following journals in the chronological order that is the Tatler, Examiner, the Review and the Spectator. So first comes the 
tat, uh, tattler second is the spectator third one is the review and the last one is the examiner actually uh, tattler spectator and the review uh, belongs to neoclassical age and the examiner belongs to the next that is a uh, transitional period i hope you have enjoyed my class please like and subscribe my channel thank you